Good morning, everybody. It's time for Ask Sharon Wednesday, and I'm so excited to be here. I, uh, I can't believe it's April already, but April is National Financial Literacy Month. Um, obviously, tax time is coming up April 15th, so kind of, I guess that's an appropriate reason. That this is the month that's National Financial Literacy Month because we pretty much everybody has to look and see how well or how well or how not well they did last year. Um, but this is a, a month we're going to be posting a lot of different things about money and credit and things that we can support everyone. And, um, and in fact, we did a special offer yesterday um, on this site and one, um, if you're a member of the Play Big Movement, you can go there as well. But we want to make sure that we provide the tools that to, can help you take control of your financial life. And I'm excited because um, literally Angela and I sat yesterday morning and I said, I want to do something special. So we're basically, we're giving away the program at cost and it's something that is normally $14.97. We're taking it down really low to $197 because I want to make sure everybody can take um, advantage of the information and really start implementing it. Give yourself the gift of investing in yourself. And um, it's amazing to me because, um, you know, I know the information works and I know that people receive great benefit from it. And that there are still people that shy away from saying, yes, I need to educate myself. And, you know, the, the gift of financial education to yourself is the gift of a lifetime. Because once you make those few small changes, it lasts forever. And so I just want you to think about it. And have you really taken advantage of opportunities that can take you to the next level? And, um, you know, it's, it should be a no-brainer to seize that information that can help you really see not just what's happening in your wallet, but what's happening up here. You know, what's holding you back? What are those obstacles? How do you get back those, through those obstacles? And there's so many people that, you know, if you lay down and, and stressed about money at night, you know, you need to take some action. You need to invest in yourself um, because that just gets worse. Don't wait for a, a knight in shining armor to ride in on a white horse. It's time to be your own white knight. Be your own white knight. And, uh, Put strap on that shining armor by investing in yourself and getting the education you need. Because, you know, really, as children, we're brainwashed. And we, that brainwashing lasts into our adult years. We're brainwashed in the fact that we need to exchange our time for money as an employee. And we need to break out of that mindset. We're also brainwashed that we live in a world of scarcity because of things, such fear around money. And I want to explode that fear. I want to get it out of your brain. And I want you to transfer from we live in a world of scarcity that we live in a world of abundance. Because we do. We can create money. We need, you know, it's buy, build, or create assets. And that's something that uh, every day we have the opportunity to take that next step. And um, it starts by investing in ourselves. And a lot of people will spend money to go to a party, spend money to go out to eat, drop several hundred dollars. But when it comes to investing here, we shut, oh, I can't afford it. In that statement, I can't afford it. That's negative. That shuts your head down. That speaks scarcity. So maybe you don't go out to dinner next week because you're investing yourself today. That's a wise investment. Have your friends over for a potluck is a whole lot more fun anyway. So start thinking about the choices you're making and the decisions you're making. Are you investing in your future? Or are you avoiding your future? Because when you avoid your future, you make the decision not to invest in yourself and you live in the moment. And when you invest in the future, you create a more pleasant moment today because you're creating a foundation of financial health. So let's get into the questions. Hey, Sharon, this is Jason, full-time employee at a pretty large national organization. 
I enjoy my job, but I'm also a student of personal development. Well, good for you, Jason. I love the inspiration behind great teachers such as yourself, but I'm having difficulty translating these teachings into my daily life. I don't know if it's a lack of hunger, motivation, or what my problem is. If there are only, only one thing that you suggest that I focus on in order to open up my income potential, what would it be? Oh, wow, Jason. I think this applies to everybody watching and listening because we get comfortable. Um, you know, Les Brown says you got to be hungry, right? So, you, and you picked it up, you probably heard that word from him. Lack of hunger, motivation, or what my problem is. And a lot of it is um, we get into, in the book Outwitting the Devil, is called Hypnotic Rhythm. We get into a place in our life where we're doing the same thing every day. All right. And it becomes such an ingrained habit that to try and step out and do something different is creates fear. So we kind of stay into that comfortable pattern and then we need to step outside our comfort zone. And um, you maybe have a lot of different options that are rolling around your brain. We'll just sit down and take one, just do one step. And um, in the book, Three Feet from Gold, we talk about the personal success equation. And we have the opportunity, um, if you want, in fact, Angela, I'm gonna have you put it in the comments where you can um, come to our website and we'll send you a little worksheet for you to really analyze your own personal success equation. Maybe it's, you need to go to a different networking group to expand your association. Um, Maybe there's something that you need to do one step at a time. Have those little wins. Because the first step you take is the most difficult. And you'll look back and you go, I did it. And then it will be a lot easier to take the second step. And then all of a sudden, you're going to find yourself running, not taking baby steps. But that first step, I challenge each and every one of you. This is Financial Literacy Month. So take the first step to improve your financial conditions. Let me go to the next question. Good luck to you, Jason, keep me posted. From Clark in Bakersfield, California. Hi, Sharon, I've been following you for several months and like your teaching style. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Clark. I appreciate that you give us steps to take and different ways to think of things. As much as I wanna follow all of the advice you give, I'm so stuck in my financial hole that I feel paralyzed from doing anything. I go back and listen to you again, and by the time I work myself up to do anything, I'm feeling overwhelmed again. What does a person do when they can't even take the first step? Well, Clark, um, you know, ask yourself, you are where you are today because of the choices you made before today. If you want something different, you need to take a different choice. So I appreciate the fact that you've been listening to me and that you get excited, and then when you start to do it, you get back into that hypnotic rhythm we just talked about with Jason. And so, um, you know, if it is, there's a little 10 word um, statement, all too let. If it is to be, it is up to me. Write it down and put it up on your mirror. And maybe, and I think maybe that overwhelm is that you see such a huge thing in front of you. So for instance, when people have a lot of credit card debt, I say, you know, people typically say, take, go after the one with the highest interest rate. I want you to start with the one with the lowest balance and put everything in your power to pay that off because that's gonna give you a sense of accomplishment. And with that sense of accomplishment comes renewed vigor, renewed motivation, um, and it gets you the, the, the energy to keep going. Then you can start looking at that highest interest rate. But have a win. Those little wins are so important. And that paralysis is you being a victim. So I'm going to challenge you, stop being a victim. Because when we're paralyzed, we're, we think about our own problems, our own concern. We let fear take control of us. We're giving up our power. Take back the power. Start doing things that you can deal with to support you. And then you're gonna feel empowered when you take that first step. And figure out what is the worst thing that can happen if you take a step. 
right? Things doesn't sound like things can get much worse, but things can improve. And find somebody that's close to you that can be your accountability voice, your partner, your cheerleader, help you take those steps. It's just like going to the gym. If you know you're supposed to meet somebody there, you're more apt to make it than if it's up to you to go alone. So have somebody that you trust that can give you that support to take that first step. Hi, John, Mark, Mike, Angela, lovely. Thank you so much for being here. Um, next question. My name is Marin, and I'm 36, working single mother of two kids. After my divorce, it took a long adjustment and creatively finding income opportunities to be able to cover the financial requirements of being a single mom. By the time I got to break even, I was already in quite a bit of debt. I'm working on getting out from under all the debt and I've heard different advice on how to get the best results. Do I pay down the lowest balance first? Oh, I, should, I guess I should have read this before I started my last answer. Um, do I pay down the highest interest rate? Is there one strategy that is better than the other or something different than I should be doing? So Maren, I just was sharing with Clark, So, but I will repeat it because I think it's important because a lot of people say pay off your highest one first, highest interest rate. And that actually is, you know, a way to go. But if you are having trouble up here when it comes to taking the steps you need to take, then start by find, list them all out your debts, find the lowest balance and pay that off first. Because all of a sudden you're going from nine debts to eight. That's a win. All right. Paying that last balance off. That's a win. But the other thing is, you know, every month you're paying a certain amount. And when you pay off that card, the amount that you would pay on that card, transfer that to the next card. Continue looking at the next card and continue paying it down. Anytime you get a bonus or a raise, don't go spend more money. Assign that bonus and that raise to pay down those bad debts right? Not good debts, bad debts. And with each step and each decision you make, all right, when you make the decision, that's a bump in motivation. It makes you feel better. And then when you take the action, that's a second bump in self-confidence. So the decision is the first one. The action is the second one. And that gives you that motivation to keep going. And so, yes, I highly recommend pay the lowest balance first, then start looking at that highest interest rate. And look to see if you can, um, you know, the, the next step, even when you aren't able to pay it off completely, see if you can get a transfer to a lower interest rate card. Now, maybe your credit score is what you need to be looking at as well. Because if you are behind and your credit score has suffered, start focusing on ways to improve your credit score. And that's what we, you know, this money mastery course that we're offering this incredible special on, you know, it, it's my entire life work I put into this so that people wouldn't have to pay me a lot of money directly. So I put it into an online course and you still have access to me through Facebook and through um, info at Sharon Lecter. But I wanted you to have the tools to start whittling away at that bad debt and start creating good income. Lots of different ways to generate additional income. And um, the course is, is seven modules. Each module has three videos and workbooks. So it's a big course, but it takes you through that process. And each one I address the action steps as well as the mindset steps. Because that's, you know, we hear the term, the poor get poorer, the rich get richer, because they're not being taught. I want to teach you how to become rich. I want to teach you how to get out of bad debt. But part of that teaching is changing your thought process. Get away from scarcity to abundance. And so that's, we've spent months putting this course together and it really is a finite action plan. If you follow and you get through that, you will be in a better place. And yes, it's $14.97, we've been offered a $9.97 on our website. We haven't even really publicly launched it yet. But because this is National Financial Literacy Month, Angela and I sat down yesterday and we said we want to give it just at cost. So like for $197, you're going to get $1,500 course. And, it, and it's not just a sales technique. It's me wanting to give to you the tools to create success in your life. 
And um, it, I don't know how long we're offering this. And you can put that in there it's for a limited time. But I just want there not to be a barrier to you taking the steps that you need to to become financially independent. Because um, and yes, Milton, it is a it is not it is generic. It is gender neutral. <laughs> it's for men and women. And um, it is something that I just I want to honor my profession, my experience, the incredible things I've learned along the way on how to motivate people to take those steps. And part of that is processing this because I, it's not just the financial action, it's the mind action, making sure that mindset changes as you go along. So next question, Jerry. And I'm a husband and father of three. My wife and I both work, and together our combined in, in, income seems like it would be healthy. I say, I say seems because we find ourselves able to manage the expenses of the household, but without much extra. We have modest savings, and our debt is limited to two car loans in our house. Um, we do not have extravagant lifestyles. Some are skipping our vacation or trips because we don't have the extra cash to pay for it. I'm sure are things we can do to save money each month, but my wife and I have different mindsets about spending on the little things. If she thinks we need something, she buys it without consideration to whether we actually need it, needs versus wants. She's also more likely to make daily stops to pick up treats, drinks, and other small purchases that add up. We have enough income to cover these purchases, but it leaves us without money to do things like build savings as fast as we want or put into investments. She's accused me of having a scarcity mentality. Do you believe it is a scarcity thinking to be focused on making the most of what we have? If my mindset is a problem, I'm willing to address it. Well, Jerry, definitely this is something, what, what I would prescribe to you, this is the money doctor here talking to you, is to create a money date with your wife and go to your favorite restaurant that is um, reasonably priced but away from the kids and make it humorous. So you start off by talking about your parents' philosophy about money. It's amazing how with that conversation, talking about your parents' philosophy about money, you may actually discover where her attitude comes from and where your attitude comes from. And with money, you know, this is something that uh, set a goal, maybe the vacation goal. So the vacation goal that you want to do this year all right, is how you pay for that is instead of doing the drive through for the you know $10 coffees, um, you're making your coffee at home and that money goes into that fund so that you're, it's like almost gamifying it so that the two of you create a competition on how much money you can save to your, for your vacation. And then that establishes a habit of saving that can go well beyond the vacation. But the issue is you both you have different habits, right? And right now you're in a state of irritation with one another. Not good. So stop, have the money date, have the conversation about how your parents feel about money, and you know, and address the scarcity. Do you have a scarcity mindset? You know, maybe instead of looking at how you can whittle away at your expenses, you should be thinking about how can we generate more income? How can we create more income that gives us some padding? And that may be by starting something on the side. And, you know, maybe it's affiliate marketing. Maybe it is, um, you know, going to the local flea market and selling something on the weekends. As a family, start teaching your kids about entrepreneurship. There are ways, um, you know, the issue is either live below your means or expand your means, right? And it's that interim period where you're going through the transition that can be difficult and that it's better if you do it together. You come together and make that decision. Um, you know, part of her frustration, she has the habit of doing and buying little things on the fly. Um, you know, I, years ago, I, my daughter was over here helping me clean out my closet and she was yelling at me because I had a bunch of things that were going to Goodwill with tags still on them. And I realized that some, you know, I don't like to use the term compulsive shopper, 
But what I would do, I'd say impulsive. I was impulsive shopper, not a compulsive because I don't like to shop. But I'd go in to buy something, maybe a, a blouse. And I, of course, that's how they set up things at the checkout counter, right? I'd end up buying four or five additional things. Not that I intended to buy them, but I bought them. And so I kind of created what I call my two-minute rule. And after that day with my daughter, and it was it, when I went to buy something, if I saw other things I liked, I'd look at them and I'd set them aside, walk away for two minutes. And if at the end of that, I still wanted them, I'd go and get them. Now, I had the financial wherewithal to do that, but I also knew that I was, you know, buying things that I wouldn't eventually... I, I never found the, the top to match the skirt or I never, you know, whatever, or it didn't look nearly as good on at home as it did in the store. Um, and that two minute rule, a few years later, pulling together stuff for good while I didn't have, but a couple items that had tags on them. So I knew I made the right decision. But again, it was like challenging myself, but I, kind of in a fun way. So instead of making it stressful, find a way to make it more fun. And it's amazing how you can kind of get refocused on income generation. So good luck to you. Keep me posted, Jerry. Because remember, your family is important. And um, if you're frustrated about this and she's frustrated about it, you're, it's going to cause further problems. And it's also potentially going to impact your health. So try and find a, a common thread. And maybe it's halfway. Maybe she agrees to spend half as much as she used to as opposed to cutting it out. Or maybe you agree you're going to do something on the side as a family that generates revenue. And remember, when you talk about vacations, it's the experience, not the expense that counts, right? Do something that still bonds you as a family. Go fishing for the day. Um, go hiking for the day. Things that don't cost money. So next one, greeting Sharon. Um, my name is Jeanette, and I'm a solopreneur photographer. I'm able to make a living at what I'm doing, but a friend of mine who has an actual small business with a team working for her asked me what is stopping me from getting bigger in my business. I admitted to her that I'm scared of spending money on investing in people to help me grow or do work in my business because I'm not great at managing finances. Having people work for me would definitely complicate my financial situation. I've been learning to get better, but don't feel I'm ready yet. But I also don't know when I will know if I am ready. How do you suggest that I validate my level of knowledge is enough to take on additional financial responsibility? Well, Jeanette, um, this is definitely um, a mindset issue and I think based a lot in fear. If you're not good at the financial situation, you probably should first start with finding somebody as a mentor on the financial side. Have them sit down and do an honest reflection of where you are financially. Because I don't suggest anybody hire staff if they're not financially capable of doing it. Um, and, you know, maybe what you need is, um, I'm just looking, I'm trying to say, uh, spending, you're scared of spending money on investing in people to help me grow or work in my business because I'm not great at managing finances. Well, test, all, you know, I would say test, test, test. Back to Angela and I were just this morning talking about something new I want to do. And, um, in fact, here's a test for you where you put in the comments. Thinking of offering a daily um, message of auto-suggestion. If you would be interested in something like that, let me know. It's something that, uh, you know, we just need to feed our brain and have vitamins to our brain. And it's something that helps keep us out of ourselves. And instead of looking inwardly, we're looking outwardly and looking for that motivation that keeps us going in the right direction. And it's also validation. So we talk about surrounding yourself with people who support you and want you to be successful. It's also hearing from people that you can do it. You can do it. You already are an expert. You have every right and uh, you know, awesome opportunity to create the success you deserve. 
And I know I, you know, like we get feedback all the time from these programs we've created. That it opens people's eyes to the possibilities. Their self confidence grows. Um, and it's something that I want each and every one of you to think about because for things to change, you must change. So what do you need to do? Invest in yourself. Um, take the action that you know you need to take. And for for you, Jeanette, I'm concerned because what I as I read this, I hear a lot of fear. And so um, what happens is we are, when we surround ourselves with negativity, remember um, my definition of the word worry. To worry is to pray for what you do not want. To worry is to pray for what you do not want. And this is, I'm the queen of worry. And I find myself, you know, what happens with the law of attraction, the point I wrote about, when you think about bad things, you track bad results. And so I catch myself when I, I still have my worry storms, as I call them, and I catch myself and, and instead of thinking about what I don't want to have happen, I stop. It's like a trigger and reprogram to focus on what I do want. And it's magic. And so I think you need to do that, Jeanette, Jeanette because I think you are living in a, in a cesspool of worry here. And I say that lovingly. I want you to take a step back. And instead of focusing on all the things that could go wrong, let's start focusing on the things that could go right. And the first step is figuring out where you are financially. And either hire somebody to help you or sign up for my course. It's going to take you through the process, the mindset process, as well as the course. And this is not a selling you know, I'm not, it's not a sales pitch, but I, I really believe it can help you because it's about how you're thinking about money. And it will take you through the process of determining where you are today. Most of us don't even know. We put our head in the sand. Determining where you are. And, part, and even just doing that, even though the picture may not be happy, you feel good because you've actually taken action. And then you can create the plan on how to get out of that bad debt or how to start building your credit or how to start making any additional income. And just by doing that, you're going to feel kind of grown up. You're taking control. And that I want each of you to take control of your financial life. And that's why we're cre we've created this special, you know, limited time offer because it is Financial Literacy Month. And I'm dedicated to supporting each and every one of you. To, to really improve your financial life. And if you don't do it, how will you change? If you don't take action, things won't change. And so what are you going to do today to improve your financial situation? I challenge you to take action. I challenge you to dedicate yourself today, April 3rd, to by the end of April, you say, I've taken this action, three actions. Let's say I'm going to challenge you to three actions this month. And stay with us. And if you haven't joined the Play Big Movement, please do. Play Big Movement with Sharon Lecter. And we'd love to have you be part of that group. And I'm excited about it because we really are, we're, we're getting close. We're going to be launching a new website. And shortly after that, we're actually going to start promoting the courses that we have and they won't be nearly at this price um you know those plans are all in the process right now i'm pretty excited about it and uh, we have the um your money mastery course that we're talking about today and then we have the play big course also as well as thinking rich for women and then we have essential components of a successful business so we have all four courses and it's something that um is really I wanted to make our information available to everybody that needs it at a price that's um, affordable. So it's up to you to take action. And I challenge each of you to take an action today for yourself financially. It is Financial Literacy Month, but I'd rather you focus on pay your family first. And that's by educating yourself and taking the action one step at a time to take control of your finances. I love you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'm so, oh, Robin, you're here. Fantastic. And Milton, Robert, I love it. So happy that you guys are here. Mike, Angela, Eleanor. Oh, hi, Eleanor. 
And, uh, oh, that's so sweet. Hi, Sharon. Love this. I'm a student of Sharon's and can attest her teachings are game changing. I love it. I love it. Ken, love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Linda, wow. I'm so excited. Everybody's here. Thank you so much. And yes, I appreciate every single one of you. Take care. Love you.